Hey guys, Garrett here, and it is cold outside. And it's amazing, because right now it's 22 degrees outside. This is all in Fahrenheit. Everything I talk about is gonna be in Fahrenheit, but it's 22 outside, and that's balmy compared to what it's been. It is February, and typically it gets fairly cold, but to be honest, our average temperatures here in Kansas, this is in the Wichita area, is usually in the mid 40s at this point in February. But over the last two weeks, we had a cold front come down, and it just hasn't left us. So it has been below freezing for that entire two week period and we've set numerous numerous records for all time cold temperatures and those of you with air source heat pumps they've probably shut down at this point and you're on backup heat whether that's natural gas oil fired propane or just electric strip heating but the question is, is geothermal even affected by this? Well, I knew that this cold snap was coming, so I thought, hey, this is the perfect opportunity to monitor the temperatures within the house, outside, as well as ground source heat pump. So I went ahead and took a bunch of those readings over time, and as time got on, the whole thing got more and more scientific. So, to answer your question, did I have any problem with my geothermal system not heating my house? The answer is no. And why is this? Because I am drawing from the Earth's heat, not the air temperature. So, what happens outside doesn't really affect that ground temperature that my loops are buried. My loops are buried 10 feet down in the ground, so they aren't affected by the changes in the air temperature. In fact, the only thing that did happen during this time was, yes, my furnace, just like all of yours, was running a little bit more often. If you have a very poorly insulated house, your heater probably never even turned off. I have a very well insulated house. It's an ICF house, so I take advantage of the thermal masses that are going on. But regardless, my system still went on more than it normally would. As that air temperature outside goes down and the temperature within your house stays the same, it causes a bigger difference. Well, that bigger difference means that the average temperature of your house would usually fall given the same amount of heat input into your house. Therefore, your system is going to run more and more and more to get more BTUs of energy into your house, therefore to keep that average temperature of your house that much higher, even though the gradient between the two has grown. So if you keep your house at 70 degrees during the winter and it's 40 degrees outside, there's not a huge differential right there. But if it's zero degrees outside and you still want 70 inside, that's a big difference. It's gonna take a lot more heat energy to pump into your house. Now the main question is where are you getting your heat energy? And again, I did a geothermal, so I'm getting it from the ground. So my ground source heat pump sends liquid out in coils that are buried under the ground and it's searching for heat or it's shedding heat. So in the winter time, it's trying to absorb heat from the ground, which then gets transferred into the house. During the summertime, it's trying to shed heat into the ground so that it takes heat out of the house and then therefore puts it in the ground. So what I wanted to see is what do the extremes, do they even have an effect on the performance of the system? And so I did this by taking temperature readings from my geothermal unit. So with a ground source heat pump, you have the incoming temperature of the fluid. That's the fluid that's already circulated out in the pipes in the ground. And that goes into the heat pump. The heat pump extracts the heat from it. And then you have the outgoing fluid. Well, I can get the temperature of both of those so I can tell what the difference is between the incoming and the outgoing fluid. So I did this on the first day and I did not record when I took that measurement. So I'm not even sure when I did it or how long my system had been running, but the incoming temperature was 44.9 degrees and the outgoing temperature was 37.7 degrees. Again, the problem is I didn't record when it was or even what the air temperature was. The second day, I forgot to take the readings. The third day, I was smart enough to at least put the time in of when I took it. So I took it and it was 42.9 degrees coming in and 35.7 degrees going out. And this was 7.30 a.m. And here's the reason that I started taking the time. The system that I'm using, I actually have two geothermal systems, but there's only one of them that I can predict when it's actually going to come on. That's my four ton system that 
heats and cools my main living spaces. And the reason I used this system was because at night I have it set at 66 degrees. So that's the air temperature at night of that section of the house. Well, at 7 a.m. I have it set to increase to 68 degrees. So I knew at that point every single day between seven and whenever the system shuts off, it's going to be on. Well, I didn't want to take the temperature right when the system comes on. I wanted it to run for a little while. So at this point, I made a decision to go ahead and take those temperatures at roughly 720. Their floor had been on for 20 minutes and everything should have equalized at that point. Well, the next day I wasn't even there at 720, so I still took a temperature. It was in the afternoon and again, it's kind of outside of what the averages of the rest of these are gonna be. It was 45.6 incoming, 38.1 degrees outgoing. So I must have caught it right when it turned on. But from that point on, I was diligent about doing this at 720 every single morning. So as you can see, the difference of the temperature of the incoming temperature during this six day period only ranged about a degree to a degree and a half. So it was very, very consistent. It was anywhere from 42.6 degrees to 41.3 degrees. The outgoing temperatures were from 35.4 degrees to an absolute low of 34.3 degrees. And that low was on the coldest day of the whole period. At the time that I took the reading, it was minus 15 degrees outside. So what do we know from this? What does this prove to us? Well, there's a couple of things here. Number one, that a geothermal system can keep up. Number two is, a person may think that uh, the ground only has so much heat to give, or especially where your loops are only has so much heat. You know, you want to think of it in terms of a thermal saturation. And a thermal saturation would just be, it'd be just like a cone of influence for a water well. So there's a cone of influence that a water well, it can draw only so much until it doesn't have enough water coming back in to replenish the supply. Well, that'd be the same thing for your lines that are buried outside. If you have them too shallow and the temperatures of the fluid going out and circulating through are too low, you're not gonna extract a lot of heat from that. And that's where air source heat pumps get into big trouble. When the temperature outside is zero degrees, there's not much heat to be gained from that. So at that point, they are too inefficient to even run and it makes sense just to use backup heat. But with the geothermal, because the Earth's temperature is so consistent down below and assuming that you actually designed your system correctly, it just doesn't matter what the temperatures are outside. So with my incoming fluid temperatures being in the low 40s, does that mean that that's what the temperature of the soil is at that point? No. The temperature of the soil about 10 feet down is probably in the upper 50s to around 60 degrees. But that's just as much of the heat that it could pull from the earth in the given time that that fluid was out in those loops. So a big thing that I learned was there really was no thermal saturation of my lines. And I did a slinky type system. And I've heard a lot of comments of people saying, oh, that's going to be a very inefficient way of doing it. It's not. It works just fine. Just design it correctly, get enough loop length, and you'll be just fine. On top of that, bury it deep enough and the outside temperature won't have any effect on what's going on on your lines. So if you're looking at this data and you're thinking, okay, yes, Garrett, the temperatures did come down even a little bit on the coldest day. And there's a reason for that. It was super, super cold. And again, that temperature difference between the outside air and the house air was the greatest at that point, which meant that my system ran more. And therefore, like I was saying with that well example, that cone of influence, we drew a little bit more heat out of the earth and it only had so much more time to recharge. It still had plenty of heat to give us, but we were starting to have a little bit of an effect on that earth in the area. But the fact that it only dropped by one degree is pretty amazing to me. Not one single time did we ever have to turn on any sort of backup heat. Our house was toasty the entire time. We definitely used more power and that's because the every system was running more than it normally would. And our solar panels were covered with snow. So we had very, very little production on the time, but we were comfortable 
and everything worked as it was supposed to. Hopefully this is helpful if you are thinking about doing a ground source heat pump. Again, I'm always going to be the one to say deep is better. Don't be afraid of it. There's nothing to be afraid of if you design your system correctly. It's going to work flawlessly regardless of what the temperature outside is. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.